Well, hey guys, I'm going to take a look at a simple pre-amplifier circuit you can make. It requires one transistor, a couple capacitors, and four resistors. Not much to it. Pretty simple to make. It's just this circuit here, the rest of the stuff is just happens to be parked here on this breadboard. And here's the schematic. This is one way to do it. There are many ways to design a pre-amplifier, and, and this is a pretty common circuit here. It's a low to moderate gain type amplifier that you can connect to a line input stage. You can add a potentiometer volume control here if you want to adjust the level. And you put your input signal here. That could be uh, from a microphone. It doesn't have a lot of gain, but it will work for close mic applications like uh, you know, if you're doing videos and you're speaking into a microphone, it'll work for that. And it might even work well for a, uh, a guitar preamplifier. Well, these circuits are, you know, they look pretty simple, but the way they operate is kind of complex. And to explain it all would take probably an hour, so I'm just going to gloss over it real quick here. Well, these four resistors set the parameters for the amplifier. You know, if I change any one of them, it screws up how the amplifier is biased, and I'd have to recalculate and you know put in new values of resistors. So, you know, it's kind of a feedback type circuit, and it because of that, it makes it complex. You just can't grab resistors and throw them in there. Hope that it works. It's a class A type amplifier in that it's biased at one half supply voltage or thereabouts. You know, you measure from ground to the collector, it'll be around half the supply voltage. And to bias that, there's a voltage divider network across the base. So you go from supply to base and then from base to ground. Now, the collector side resistor, that's important because if I took this out, I would get no signal in the output because essentially the base, or I mean the collector would be connected to the supply. And you know when a, uh, a current passes through a resistor, it converts it into a voltage. So having a varying signal on the input causes the current to vary on this output side and the varying current creates a varying voltage then we tap off of that and we send it on. Now we get to the emitter resistor. This has an interesting job in this circuit. Well if you remember current through a resistor creates a voltage across that resistor. So think, as, think of this circuit as a totem pole. You have your ground level you go through all these components and you get to the top or the supply voltage potential. Well, the transistor is sitting atop this resistor, so if there's a voltage across that, that affects you know how the, the circuit's biased. And it also affects what happens when we put a signal on the input. So if we put a signal on this input, as that signal voltage rises, it causes more current to flow. More current means more voltage drop across this resistor. And again, the, think of the transistor sitting atop that diode. So now the voltage point here is increased. It counters the input voltage in a sense. What that's called is negative feedback. Well, any electronic device like a transistor or a vacuum tube is has some nonlinearity to it. Nonlinearity creates harmonic distortion and of course we don't want that in our audio. So we use something called negative feedback which corrects that and makes a nice clean signal. And uh, you know that's a whole other subject in itself and you know you, you can spend hours talking about it. But that's essentially what it does. 
Now if you ever look at a schematic, you might see a capacitor going across that resistor. That bypasses any varying signal. The gain goes up and you lose that negative feedback effect. And matter of fact, when you set up your circuit and get it working, you can add a capacitor like a hundred microfarads or whatever and watch how your signal goes up higher. But again, you're you're doing that at the cost of linearity. And uh, I should mention the capacitors here. Now this is a uh, sensitive circuit. It's got bias voltages and currents flowing through it. You don't want to connect something and disturb those, so you block any DC currents that could enter or leave the circuit using capacitors. Also, you may not want DC going into your next stage, which could be your power amplifier. So on the output, you add a capacitor. The transistor, uh, not sure if I mentioned before, but pretty much any small signal NPN transistor, I'm using the KSC1845. Nice low noise transistor. And uh, in blue here is optional. You know, if you're just using a battery, you don't need this. But if you're coming from a, a stage that has other amplifiers in it, you want to decouple this circuit from that using um, a resistor and a capacitor. And I just put some typical values in. It could be different and optimized depending on your circuit. Okay, now let's play around with it and see what happens. Okay, the function generator is sending signal to the input, and the oscilloscope is connected to the input as well. So peak-to-peak, uh, -peak we're getting about 313 millivolts. Notice that there, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little glitch and that's on the negative side. That happens because the battery in this thing, when it gets slow, I, I get a little bit of distortion. But that's good because this being an inverting type amplifier, it should flip to the top side of the waveform on the output. So I'm going to move the lead from input to the output. And don't get much. Well, it would help if I connected the battery. See what happens here. Now well, that went way up. I gotta turn this thing down. Oops, that's too much. Let's get out of the light. Well, look what we get. Now we're getting five, about 5.8 volts. So uh, you do the math. Give us our voltage gain. 5.8 divided by uh, what, whatever it was, 300 and something millivolts. But um, well, I'm not seeing the glitch. But I did let's see here. Oh, we are hitting clipping though. Let's show you what that is. See, that's it's just running out of headroom there and clipping. So we know we can't go beyond about, I don't know, six volts or so without clipping using the nine volt supply. And again, that's uh, peak voltage, that's not RMS. Let's see if I can change that. So we're getting uh, 1.79, about 1.8 volt RMS output. Okay, let's hook this up and see what it sounds like. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Okay, I have the little amplifier hooked up to my computer using that microphone. And I'm recording into Audacity. I do have only one channel available.
because it's just you know it's just a single transistor amplifier. So I will uh, convert it to mono so it comes through both speakers. Hopefully there's not too much background noise because not really uh, well isolated or uh, shielded there. Hopefully I don't pick up too much noise. Test, test, check, check, beep. Just checking the levels there. But uh, hopefully it sounds pretty decent. Never know until I try, but just an example of what this thing sounds like. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.